what are some of the biggest challenges that you have putting together a series like that? Like what's your, your, I mean, you can say you're going to do a seven part series, but how do you go about doing that? And like, what are some of the difficulties of that? I guess the biggest struggle is just getting it done. Yeah. Cause I already have it all pretty much mapped out. I'm, you know, I just need to sit down and paint it. So that's why I kind of started the podcast talking about how I've been really incorporating a daily practice and I've been coming out to the studio every morning, like first thing and putting in at least 20, 30 minutes on every day so that at least I make some progress because seven paintings, yeah. you're not going to just be done. <laughs> you know? So that's the biggest struggle is just like dedicating the time to getting it completed. Yeah. How do you map out something like that? Well, what I, so without giving it all away, I guess. So I'm using, um, I love it. I'm, it's like, it's like, it's an M night Shyamalan movie or something. You don't want to give away the twist. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I decided I'm going to do crystals. So I'm going to paint, I want to paint like crystals or diamonds or something like that for each oh. of the color. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then each of the chakras already has like a number of petals. So each chakra has like a, a lotus flower, right? Okay. And then it will have a number of petals. So instead I translated that into the number of points that a crystal would have. So like, you know, a diamond would be however many sides or, you know, there would be, um, you know, like uh, that one is the one I showed you has 14 points. Yeah. So it's like a star, you know, a 14 pointed star. So that's already kind of mapped out for me. Right. I just have to put the put the geograph the put the thing on the, the canvas. Mm -hmm. So. And then I decided to incorporate also the designs that are on the dollar bill. So I chose which pieces of the dollar bill, like filigree that I'm using for each of the chakras. So I just have to put it all together. Yeah. And you're into yeah. your one painting into it right now? No, five. Oh, you're five into it. Okay. I thought you just had the yeah. one that you showed me. So you have five. Yeah. Well, they're all at different stages. Okay. But, um, and two are- Oh, you're doing them not... like in tandem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I wanted to, yeah. So that they all at least have some, cause I don't, you know, over the course of seven paintings, if I just did one, you learn so much from one to the next yeah. that I wanted them to look together, you know? So. Right. It, it, and I suppose that way you don't get burnt out on one. And also it does seem more efficient now that I think of it. Like that's silly not to work on multiples at the same time, isn't it? It makes sense. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking yeah. like you had to wait till you were done with one to move on to the other. Oh, Okay. No, but I am trying to incorporate that into my, my, uh, the way I work because yeah. I used to have just all of my paintings are unfinished. I'd have 50 unfinished paintings. And so now I'm trying to be like, I'm going to finish at least one set of paintings before I move on to anything new. So that's motivation. And when you say unfinished, like, have you ever tried, and this is just me thinking off the top of my head, have you ever just shown them to people, even though they're unfinished? And I know to you, it's like just showing this horrible, unexposed, you know, sort of thing. But like, do you think other people would interpret them as being unfinished? Like, I, I, I often wonder the, uh, the amount of work that I know people don't show the public. I'm curious yeah. if you've ever tried showing someone just to see what their reaction is. Yeah, well, I mean, I used to do a bunch of street fairs and I love live painting. Like, so there, I'd spend the weekend at a street fair and I'd bring all of the paintings I'm working on. Okay. And I would go, you know, I'd spend, you know, one hour on one, put, the, put it to the side, spend an hour on another one. And I've had people buy them right off me in those stages. What about the the unfinished ones that you were waiting to do? Like, would people buy, go sometimes. to buy? Okay, that's what, that's what I was wondering. Because sometimes yeah. I know we and say so it's unfinished, but other people are like, this is fantastic. You know, it's, right. it's that, that goes back to the uh, afraid to put the brush on the canvas sort of thing. Like, maybe yeah. you are done. <laughs> right. No, and I definitely wouldn't let something go if I was like, that is not even done. Like not even like, you know, there, or but why I was not? Like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why not? Like if somebody really appreciates it as is, you know, it's, yeah. it, I mean, why wouldn't you let go of it? And I'm, I'm legitimately asking you and me that. Cause I'm thinking the same way. Like I have tons of unfinished stuff where I'm like, ah, I'll work on that some other day. And it's like, or maybe I can just show someone. So yeah. What, why, why do we think like that? I don't know. <laughs> well, some of it is sentimental, right? Because you're like, I want to see it finished. So I'm not ready to sell it. Yeah. right? Cause you want to like what you want to see what it's going to look like when it's done. But then there's some that are, they're just varying stages of me spending time on them, you know, and I'm happy to, I'm happy that somebody 
has seen what I've seen so far on it and that I'm happy to sell it, you know? So that's, there's two sides of it. And there's a saying that says the painting's not done until it's sold.